Good morning, everyone. It's good to see everyone this morning in the house of the Lord. Uh, welcome to Mayo Memorial United Methodist Church, where we love God, we love people, and nothing else really matters. Uh, just a few announcements before we get started. Um, next Sunday, uh, we'll be celebrate, celebrating uh, All Saints Sunday. Uh, if there are any saints that, uh, that have passed away in the past year that you would like to have recognized, uh, please get those into Connie at the office uh, by Wednesday so she can get those in the bulletin. Uh, also, uh, remember that next Sunday is uh, Daylight Saving Time ends, so we fall back an hour next week. So please remember that so you're not late for church or you'll show up and everybody's gone. Or no, you'll be an hour early. Ah, that's too much thinking. That's too much thinking. Um, also, today is our uh, fifth Sunday uh, offering uh, for the uh, United Methodist Children's Home. Uh, there's an insert inside your uh, bulletin for that, if you would, and also an envelope if you would like to give to, to that today. Or uh, if you didn't come prepared today, you can give next week uh, online if, if you would like to give you can mail that to the church and just mark it as uh, the children's home uh, I think uh, for the ones online I will read the, uh, the insert here uh, when Lee was 14 years old she started running away from home I just had to get out there she said my mother was physically abusive and my grandmother was verbally abusive. Lee recalls the, that after running away more times than she could count, she appeared before a judge. After hearing about Lee's home life, the judge recommended she move to the Kentucky United Methodist Children's Home to keep her safe. If she ran away again, she would be placed into foster care. Lee arrived at the Versailles campus uh, of the Kentucky UMH when she was 16 years old. I didn't know if I should treat it as an adventure or as a punishment, Lee said. When she first arrived, she struggled to trust in the staff and other residents. Lee remembers in the first weeks, she would glance at an open window or door wanting to escape, but the words of the judge would come back to her. As bad as it felt at the time, I knew I had to stick it out. Lee began to meet regularly with a psychiatrist and therapist. She began to realize that the staff at Kentucky UMH were professionals trained to help her. Lee's therapists and house parents helped her process her emotions and cope with the effects of the abuse she had endured. To this day, Lee says she uses the same coping skills in her daily life. But even more important than coping skills, being at Kentucky UMH taught Lee that she was loved and lovable. Her house parents invested in her teaching her how to build positive relationships. They guided her as she learned to clean, cook, and care for herself through daily chores. Her teachers on campus invested in her education and made sure she could graduate high school on time. They also introduced Lee to computers, which eventually led her to pursue a career in computer sciences. I don't know how I would have turned out if I hadn't ended up there without the people who helped me I wouldn't be as independent and as strong as I am today. Thanks to the support of people like you, Lee found physical and emotional healing from her past. Kentucky UMH serves 800 to 1,000 youth every year. They, they need you now more than ever as we celebrate uh, Kentucky UMH's 150th year of ministry. Will you give a special gift today? So please. Uh, you feel led to give to that, uh, please give. Oh, so there's a video online of how we can all give. Okay. Uh, and are there any other announcements that need to be brought to our attention?
Good morning. My name is Greta Sloan, and I'm liturgical support here at uh, uh, Mayo United Methodist Church. As you can see, I'm not Amy Chapman. Um, Amy was called away on an emergency this morning, and so uh, please bear with me as I uh, do my best to be her substitute. That's a, those are tough boots to fill, let me tell you. So uh, as, we, let's, as we worship this morning, let us uh, pray for strength for her um, as she uh, um, uh, counsels and, and helps uh, others um, at this hour. If you'll open your uh, bulletins and share with me in our call to worship, as your part is in the emboldened, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let all who draw breath praise the Lord. Happy are those whose help is from God, the one who made heaven and earth, the one who created the seas and all that is in them. Happy are those whose hope is in God, the one who keeps faith forever, the one who feeds the hungry and defends the oppressed. God will reign forever for all generations Praise the Lord. Let all who draw breath praise the Lord. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we gather here together in your name and in your honor and in your glory, and we just praise and worship you with our lives. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and for as a, a, another week begins that we are able to spend time together as your church, in communion, as one, and that you hear our prayers above and beyond all. You know our thoughts and you hear us, and we are so very grateful. May this worship be pleasing and accepting to you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. At this time, if you will rise as we acknowledge one another in the peace of Christ, and begin to sing our hymn of praise, which is number 61, Come Thou, Come Thou Almighty King. be seated. You 
We're a beautifully trained bunch. We know exactly what to do. Um, at this time, let us go to the Lord with our praises and our concerns as we lift those up together as a congregation that is so very powerful. And so I'd like to ask uh, what is on your heart this morning. Um, John Mandola, is that what you said? Let us uh, petition the Lord this morning for prayers for John as he is recovering from COVID. And uh, we know that um, there are so many people in this same situation. So we lift them up as well in, in, his, in John's name. Yes, ma'am. Horrible to be stranded in Switzerland. <laughs> you said Annie and Kate. Let us pray for Annie and Kate. As being stranded is bad. All right, Switzerland not so bad. So, um, travel mercies. Pardon. Good point. Valid. Valid. So travel mercies for them. Are there others? I'd love for you to pray for the college. As uh, you know, we're living in a very different time now. Everything has changed. And uh, you know, we seek the ways that we can serve um, our, our young people and our, well, everyone. The co community college serves everyone. Uh, of all ages, so um, just that our path is is we our path is right uh, for our communities. That's our hope and prayer every single day. Are there any praises this morning? <laughs> the fall, the leaves, the color. The blessing of seasons. I like them. I think they're like chapters. They're good for me. If there are no other prayer requests or joy, uh, request or joy. What's the word? Statements of joy. Um, if, are there any online? My mom's asking prayer for her friend, um, Jonathan Hoover's son. I don't have the son's name, but they're having some difficulties with him. And then also my mom wants you to remember her dear friends, the Kongs. Um, it's like my mom's second family, Mar Maureen Kong passed away. And it's just, it's been hard on mom and the family, of course. We remember Jonathan, and we remember those that are in bereavement this morning um, as they are uh, um, in relationship with Barb and others. If you'll turn in your bulletin to the uh, hymn of prayer.
The Lord be with you. We thank you, Heavenly Creator, that we can come before you this morning and we can just lay our hearts on the line, that we can give you our concerns, that we can give you our worries and our fears, that we can rely on you, that we can ask and we can pray and we know that we can feel your presence, Lord. We know the difference in our hearts and in our bodies. We thank you for uh, enriching our lives in this way that we can cast all of our cares at your feet. We thank you for this church this morning, dear Lord, and every person who is here. We are all your disciples, and we are all willing to hear your, your word and to do as you would have us do, Lord. We thank you and we pray for our communities. We pray that in the midst that we may begin to see and feel and hear and know joy and hope. And we know that that's possible through our faith in you. And we know that our, our love is reciprocated through your presence, Lord. And that we know that our communities are uplifted through that love. We just ask that this time that you would use us in these ways and that you would help us to be that source of light and of love and compassion. And our prayer concerns are many this morning, and there are so many unspoken. There are so many that we just can't even verbalize yet. The beauty we know is that we do not have to verbalize them in order for you to hear them, Lord. We know that in our prayer, in our personal and private prayer and communication with you, that you are sustaining us and you are hearing us every single time. And how mighty that is and how incredible that feels, Lord. And in that same spirit, we just ask that you will comfort and be with those that are suffering, those that are recovering, Lord, such as John Mandela. We just ask that you be with those in the world that are um, experiencing uh, unforeseen times, Lord, those that are seeking travel mercy, such as Annie and Kate. We just ask that you would be with Jonathan and Barb and the, those in relation to Barb who are grieving, Lord. We just ask for your help. We ask for your help once again, and we know that you deliver in every single way, Lord. And we ask that you accept at this time the prayer that you taught us, your disciples, to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our morning psalter comes from Psalm 146. This authorship is attributed to David, who at this time is a prince. Prince David. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans there perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord of their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, and who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free, and the Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down, 
The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all the generations. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we prepare to give of our tithes and offerings, uh, it's a reminder of the ways you can give. You can give online at mailchurch.org or you may mail it uh, at P.O. Box 669, Paintsville, Kentucky, if you can't be here today. Uh, I will be going around with the offering plate today. Um, so as we prepare to give of our tithes and offerings, may we reflect on how gracious God has been to us. Holy God, architect of the universe, you have wonderfully made this world full of intricacy. 
And then you regarded us so highly that you placed us at the center of its harmony. We offer our gifts back to you with an all appreciation for your Jesus, who teaches us how to journey with love, with our heart, soul, mind, and strength, so that we may provide for our neighbors. May these gifts be used to symbolize the way we love as we have been taught. Amen. You may be seated. I don't have a sermon on First Kings. I know. Um, on my way here, I got a phone call to be here. And um, so I'm here. So I praise God for the opportunity and, and thank you for your patience um, with that. Um, I want to share with you this morning something that I learned this week, which is a testimony of a testimony. Okay? And I'm completely off the cuff. I have nothing. Okay? So bear with me. I'm just going to tell a story. Yes. I'm getting moral support down here. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and the babies. The babies here are giving me such life. Thank you for bringing them. Um, so in my job, I, as you all probably are in the same boat, um, there's not enough hours in the day. And you work and you work and you work. And you may love your job and you may be passionate about it, but you get tired, right? You become exhausted. And somewhere about 4 o'clock for me, I just kind of fall over somewhere. And that's the way my story goes, typically. Um, and, I, you know, because I'm just, my, my brain just can't do another thing. Um, except maybe drive home. <laughs> On good days, I feel like I've got the energy to drive home. Um, and then sometimes when I get home, I continue to work. Um, now, in my daily job of marketing, of speech writing, of press releases, of advertising, of all the things that I do, um, all the ways that I work internally and externally for my organization. Um, I have what's called uh, student interviews, student success stories, okay? Because they're, I believe in them, because I'm proud of these babies. It doesn't matter how old they are, you know, once, uh, you know, they've gone through this process and they fought and they've become victorious and I just, I mean, that brings me, reduces me to tears. I'm humbled by their stories. Um, and so it's very, very hard for me to find time, to spend time with them, and just to listen. Just to listen to what they've been through. Just to listen to who they are, to get to know them, to commune with them. Right? And I always have to learn and relearn that those are the most valuable times for me the richest times. But here my dumb brain is saying, but I ain't got time to do that. I don't have time for that. I have to, how do I squeeze that in? And that should be first, not last, right? Because that's where I find my life and my energy to do what I do. So this week was one of those weeks and I had so much so squeezed this in that I had it at Friday at 3 p.m. I'm to go to a hospital and meet with a lady who is a housekeeper at a hospital, a local hospital, to talk about how her life has been transformed through our program of becoming a CNA, okay? Now, pardon me, and, and she'll laugh about this. She'll probably hear this, listen to this. Um, part of me was hoping she would cancel. I'm going to confess that. Because, remember at 4 o'clock, I'm ready to fall over. And I just, Friday, really? This, really? We're going to do this? And maybe I was hoping she was as tired as I am. All right? And I use my brain all day. But imagine how tired she was at the end of a week using her back and everything and mopping and sweeping and all the things, all sanitizing, extra, everything she does physically to keep that hospital safe. How dare I, right? Um, so, but that's who I was that, in that moment. So I text and say, I'm on my way. Are you sure you can meet? Fair, right? 
in my defense, need to know, she still wants to do this. That's not what I was thinking. I was thinking, oh, I could just go on home. And she says, well, I'm excited and I'm nervous and I would want, I want to cancel, but it's, but I wouldn't forgive myself if I canceled. And I still didn't. I thought, okay, and I'm just going to keep driving, not thinking, I mean, you know, shallow how here. Okay, great, fine, whatever. So I pull into the hospital, and she has just finished a 12-hour shift, which means what? She started long before I was even awake, right? And she makes time for me, and she brings me into the um, uh, cafeteria um, space. And she sits down, and she's a nervous wreck to see me, and we sit down together, and she looks across the way, and she sees a waste can and a little piece of gum paper on the floor. And she says, wait a minute. And she walks over and gets that piece of paper and puts it in the trash. And I thought, all right, this is the beginning of my lesson here. This is somebody extraordinary in our day, in our time, in COVID, and in exhaustion, right? And she tells me, begins to tell me about a life of her mama praying. And she says, I am the result of a mama's prayers. And we start having church. But in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, but how am I going to write this story for a college about a mama's prayer? You know, that separation of stuff in the world. And I'm thinking, wow, okay, my writing brain's trying to spin this out already. And she starts to tell me about how she had a praying mama. She grows up. She goes away to college. She makes all the wrong choices. She has this curiosity. She gets with the wrong crowd. You know the story. We see this. I see the story a lot. I can tell you that. Um, And, you know, her mom kept praying. And then she was sexually assaulted. And as a result of that, she quit school. She's 18. She quits school, doesn't know how to deal with this, comes home, doesn't press charges, which happens so often, and begins a life of drugs to cope, to try to figure it out, to try to know how to do, to try to know how to function to try to know how to get up in the mornings. And she has this supportive mother throughout her time. And her time as 15, 18 years as a drug addict. And she says to me along the way, and I don't want to draw this out, but I hope I'm spinning this for you because she's so important to me. She says, um, if there is a heartbeat in a chest, There is a soul in that chest of the human. Because I ask her, do you believe, do you think, what do you think about drugs taking over? Because sometimes I hear in our society, well, there's no soul in there anymore. The drug addict, it's a questionable, it's a, it's not a biblical, it's a questionable human thing. And that's when she told me, if God ordains your heart to keep beating, there is a soul and there is a purpose in there every minute of your life. And she says that to me after 14 years of sobriety. 14 years. She said there was one point in her life that she was out running around and she just saw something that she says was the result of prayer that said, I can't do this anymore. I cannot do this anymore. I'm tired. And she said, I knew that if I went home to my mother up in the middle of nowhere, that would be much, much harder than a rehab. (laughs) And she says, I'm not against rehab at all. I just knew that my mama would make sure if I surrender that I could become clean. And I said, didn't but didn't you suffer physically? And she said, I suffered for months and months 
physically. And there were months and months when all my mom could do, when, when all that happened was my mom made sure I ate and I showered. She took care of me. She never gave up. She saw the will in me and did not stop. And I think about that as the Father's love. The Father never stops with us. God never stops, never gives up, no matter what, no matter, even though the Father knows what we're going to do in our lives. There's no point in time. And that's incredible. That's a, a, a miracle. And I was seeing this miracle play out in this story that was being told to me. And through violence, through addiction, through everything, she said, you know, you hear stories about addiction, and I can tell you they're all true, and it's worse. It's worse than that. And this hospital gave me a chance to be a housekeeper, knowing that I was a recovering addict. They gave me a purpose. And I'm not, I, I, I'm happy cleaning and doing housekeeping and doing laundry and that sort of thing. I'm humbled by it. I'm still grateful for it. That was the word she used. I'm still grateful for this job. But I saw a flyer here in the hospital and it was for people who wanted to become more. And I kept thinking as a housekeeper that there were so many people that were coming into this hospital that I could see were addicts, but I couldn't talk to them because I'm a housekeeper, right? There's stuff I'm not supposed to do, I'm not supposed to know. And she said, they may be coming in the hospital for completely different something else, but so many people I see come in here have an addiction. We can spot each other. We see each other. And she says, I believe that that is the Holy Spirit that allows me to see someone else who is suffering, and I just want to be able to support them. Because I had a praying mama that never stopped praying for me. Maybe they didn't have one. Maybe that no prayers went up for them. Maybe they rejected that. Maybe they don't know any better. So many other reasons, right? So many other things. And so, as I move forward in writing this story today and sending it to the press tomorrow, I just ask that you pray in this process and that you lift up Missy because she's got the courage to be in the newspaper and talk about this stuff, about how her life has been redeemed, about how she has new purpose as a CNA. Now, she began her job as a CNA at another hospital this week, and we have been posting about her and her experience and, and her victory. This is a victory for her. And I said to her, do you see yourself going on because in, 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 uh, in education? She said, I would love to be a nurse, but I just want to be able to talk to people first. So we'll see how that all goes. But we can't give up on people. That's the truth, right? Because we are never given up upon. Given upon. Well, I have to say that. God never, she, she you, you threw me off. I know, I knew I, knew I would. <laughs> Periphery here. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Yay. I think about Ephesians, and I think about our, our uh, Psalter today. Ephesians 6.18 says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Be alert in your prayers. See to see. Feel the knowing. Know where you're needed. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm late for church. Is this not the time change week? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thank you all uh, for your attentiveness here uh, this morning. I trust that the Spirit of the Lord has been present and has led this time of worship together. 
I thought of one line over and over in my head as I came to be with you here this morning. I had, I don't know what's been said or what's been shared, but I know we can come into this space and the Spirit can put all of whatever has been so far behind us and we can now center ourselves together on what's going on right now at this very moment. And as I was coming in this morning uh, from an emergency I was called out to, um, one line kept going through my head and it's a line from our children's worship curriculum that now the spirit that was in one place at one time is in all places at all times. And we say that in our children's worship service that we used to be able to share and gather in at the end of the service when we're extinguishing the Christ candle. And we watch the smoke come up from the Christ candle and I love running my fingers through it as, as the smoke rises from that candle and watching it be extinguished and watching it rise up and disperse throughout the room. It's such a holy mystery, the way that the Holy Spirit works. And as we turn in our narrative lectionary this morning to our First Kings passage, we're caught up in that mystery of God. I want to just kind of catch us up just a little bit because I know I, I don't want to give you the full sermon or we'll be here for quite a, quite a while longer. But what I want you to know about this point in the narrative lectionary today is this. God cannot and will not be contained. The Spirit of the Lord that once was in one place at one time is now in all places at all times. Amen. When we come uh, to this passage of 1 Kings today, King David, who we heard be called last week, the little shepherd boy who nobody thought would be king when he was chosen by the prophet Nathan, he served a long time I think 40 some years as king. And King David's time as king was fairly turbulent. He fought a lot. There's a lot that happened in King David's life and he teetered back and forth even though we knew he was a man after God's own heart. There were so many things that sought to separate him from that calling. Uh, but God fulfilled his purpose with King David and as we begin 1 Kings, David is being called home. Players are changing, things are moving, the church is being built and reformed. And as David is on his deathbed, it's time for a new king to be appointed. Now David had many sons. Now he wasn't Father Abraham, but he had a lot of sons because he had a lot of wives. And they were from different wives. And there was a, a, a myth of who would be king. David, in his lifetime, had promised uh, his wife Bathsheba, that their son Solomon would be the next king after, after David's death. Now Abinijah thought that he should be king, and so he went ahead and uh, took that responsibility upon himself, had a parade, and thought he was the king. However, we come back to the prophet Nathan. Nathan comes back in the picture, and he goes to Bathsheba, and he and Bathsheba decide they need to go to King David. They need to remind David of his covenant with his son Solomon that Solomon would be the next king over Israel and Judah. And so it happens that Solomon indeed becomes the king and he is given the gift of wisdom. And he is given the gift of peace. Solomon's name in Hebrew literally means shalom. When you pronounce it in Hebrew, it sounds more like Shalom than Solomon. So Solomon's kingdom was one of peace. And he lived a long, peaceful, wise time as king over Israel. And one of the things that Solomon was charged with in, this, in his reign that he took upon himself was to honor his father to finish what he had started. And that was building a place building a temple for God. And Solomon took David's plans and followed them to the T, followed them to the letter, that God would come and dwell with them. And the Ark of the Covenant, which David had brought home out of battle, 
was moved into this space of the temple. And sure enough, God remembered his promises to his people, and a dark cloud enveloped the space that Solomon had built according to the Lord's plans that the Lord had given to David. And so here we have in 1 Kings the temple being built. Now you know that this temple didn't last. Some 400 years later, Solomon had made relations with persons of other nations. He actually ended up marrying Pharaoh's daughter in Egypt. And so immediately, though Solomon was wise, he made some poor choices throughout his time as king. And those choices, even though he lived a season of peace as king, they came back to bite his people. And 400 years later, we'll see the temple destroyed by Babylon, by Nebuchadnezzar. That's a ways down the road. And we come back now to this time of realizing that God cannot be contained, don't we? So here we have God in all his fullness, they think, in this one place. But God had a bigger and better plan. This presence of God is a foreshadowing that we would someday be temples, that God's people would be the dwelling place for God because God's presence cannot be contained in one place at one time. And so God sends Jesus into the world that you and I might be a dwelling place for the living God. How wonderful is that? I think so much today about this process of reformation within the church. This is a, in the Protestant denomination, typically Reformation Sunday. And we remember all of the different ideas, ideologies, theologies, doctrines, beliefs that are in the world today about who God is and how God should be worshipped. And we bring all those together here, and we don't try to make any sense of them, but what we do is we realize that the church is being reformed day by day. The church, as an institution, is meant to be changed. It is meant to be reformed. Because people come and go, but God is forever Different ideas, different systems come into play because no one can sustain themselves forever. The players are always changing. Lives are always moving. But God is the one who stays the same. And so as we think about this idea of schism or separation within the church, of differences that we feel right now, I'm, I'm reminded of uh, something my friend Leanne said when we were talking about the worries and fears that we have even within our de own denomination of the United Methodist Church. And we wonder what this will leave us on the other side. And Leanne said something that I thought was very profound and prophetic. That what if it's not a split, but what if it's a branch? What if it's not a split, but what if it's a branch? What if we took Jesus' words to heart, and we understood that it's possible to remain in Christ and him to remain in us because he is the vine and we are the branches. And so every little shoot, every little reformation, every little split of this tree branches out to reach another part of the world and where the spirit of the Lord is. There is mystery and there is the presence of God with each person is a little temple of the living God. How beautiful is that? This is the piece of the puzzle in our narrative lectionary that reminds us again that God cannot be contained, but he lives in you and he lives in me. He is living, moving, breathing as each of our parts move and come into place. We are being reformed and transformed daily by the renewing of the Holy Spirit.
Friends, may it be so today in the name of our beloved Christ. Amen. Would you pray with me? Oh God, we thank you for all that we have experienced here today. And we ask that your Holy Spirit would work mightily in our own lives to restore us, to recreate and reform. God, give to us, as you did your servant Solomon, your wisdom, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit that calls us to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves. God, we come today to honor you, to submit ourselves to you. Search us, O oh God. See, O oh God, if there is anything wicked in us. And restore us to the joy of our salvation. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. As we affirm our faith today, we turn to a different affirmation. Uh, number 885, just a few pages over uh, from our traditional Apostles' Creed. Sometimes when words are different, we have to pay attention a little bit more. And so I wanted to do this today in this idea of reformation, to hear something that's the same, but hear it a little bit differently as you stand and turn and you answer this on 885. Friends, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end, that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. As we respond today to the presence of the Holy Spirit here among us in our own hearts, working and redeeming us in our lives, our hymn of invitation is number 330, 354, and it's a call to submit ourselves to God in the spirit of surrender. As we sing... I would ask that you would allow God and the Holy Spirit to search you now, to search our hearts, that we would devote ourselves fully to God's purpose. As we sing verses 1 through 3, I surrender all.
powerful witness to be in complete and utter obedience, to surrender all, not just some, but all. Friends, and now the light of Christ that was in one place at one time go before you and in you to be in all places at all times. Go in the peace of Christ. In the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.